Is Donald Dean Studi one of America's most prolific serial killers? Or is he a sensitive and caring father? That's what we're going to find out in this podcast from Never a Truer Word, where we look at the words that people choose to use to see if we can work out if they are telling the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And settle in for this one because it's a fascinating case. Donald Dean Studi. He died in 2013. Since then, one of his daughters claims that he is a serial killer responsible for the death of 50 to 70 people, mostly women. However, another of Donald's daughters says, nah, he's not a serial killer, that's not the case. He was a caring father who looked after his family. So, we're going to analyse and investigate the statements of those two sisters to see if we can work out if there's any chance that Donald Dean Studi is indeed a serial killer. We're going to look at the words of Lucy, one of his daughters, and she's the one that claims he is a serial killer. In fact, her claims have been believed or, or investigated, at least, by law enforcement who have been digging and looking at some land um, around where she says her father buried the bodies. And we're going to look at the words of Susan, another sister who uh, just says, no, this is not true. My dad wasn't a nice guy, but he was not a serial killer. And we're going to look at the words of those two sisters to work out what is the truth about Donald Dean Studi. And we'll look at those words using a principle called truthful deception, and especially part of that, which says truthful statements tend to be straightforward easy to comprehend, and truthful statements like any sense of trying to persuade you or convince you of anything. Because, to a person being honest, in general, the truth, it's just the truth, they just say it. To a person who is lying, to a person who is deceiving, they feel that they must work to make the truth as they see it, or the truth they want to convey, stand out and feel very solid. Compare those two sentences on the screen now. My husband is a jerk. And my nightmare husband really is a total and absolute jerk 110% of the time. One statement is very straightforward and very clear. I'd believe her husband's a jerk. The second one is working really hard. There's so many other words in there to really convince you of what is being said that you would flag that as potentially deceptive. So we're going to look at the words of these two sisters. Please, if you get something from this video as we're going through it, hit the like button, which will help more people find this. Comment as well, if you like. I'd love to hear your comments. In fact, this um, entire story came to me through a comment on my YouTube channel. Share as well with your friends if you think you know anyone who would get something out of this. And if you want more like this, then press the subscribe button to ensure that you always get the, the recent or the most up-to-date content in your notifications. So let's look at the words of the two sisters. And the first one is Lucy. So Susan is the other sister, and we'll come to look at Susan um, towards the end of this. But right now, let's have a look at the words of Lucy um, from some of the quotes that she has given to newspapers and also some of her social media posts. And this is Lucy's words, and she's talking here about a beating by her father. She says, I don't remember who I told or if I was just openly talking about it. I remember the beating with the belt buckle all over my body and across my throat. He stated to me later in life he was trying to make me mute. Dad said he wasn't going to have any more of it. He said if I went past the trailer house or up in the hills, he would kill me. He said, shut up, grow up and get out. The first thing I see there is this is very much in the straightforward um, way of telling something. This is not, and there's nothing really that could be taken out of here to make it, that would just make the same sense. There's not a lot of extra words put in here to um, persuade us. So I think this is a description of something that did happen. It appears very truthful. Now, I only look at quotes from people. I won't look at newspaper words um, or or journalist words or reported words. I'll only look at things that are direct quotes. And in a few of the articles, um, they state that Lucy says she was subject to multiple beatings by her father. And I note in this one that she's only talking about one specific beating. You can see there, she says, I remember the beating. I don't know. I remember the beatings or I remember being beaten repeatedly, it's I remember the beating. Also, he said if, um, now that refers to one occasion, if we were referring to multiple occasions, it would be he would say, 
And he said two. Again, that would be he would say two. So this is about one specific beating. I'm not trying to belittle it. I'm not trying to say, yeah, she was only beaten once. I'm not saying that at all. What I am saying, as I can tell from her words here, she is talking about one specific incidence of beating. The other thing I noticed just to, to have a look at it is it's all in the past tense, which is something you'd expect in a, a, a story that someone's remembering from the past. But quite often when people are being deceptive about events in the past, they'll slip into present tense every now and again. And Lucy doesn't do that here. So I absolutely accept here that I think there has been a beating. Um, I noticed she does refer to Donald at one point as dad which suggests a closeness there. Uh, she doesn't refer to him as he or that man or, you know, something that has more distance or disdain to it. She does refer to him as dad there. Got more from Lucy here. I want to set the record straight. My entire life, my dad would tell people that I had an active imagination, that I was touched in the head. I hallucinate that I was a liar, etc. It's not true. He said this because I wouldn't keep my mouth shut. I've been trying to tell people about my dad since 1973. I was about four or five years old. He used to beat me and or threaten my life each time I told someone. He told me that it's better for people to believe that about me than him having to kill me. So what do I notice in that set of words? Um, well, in that first part, she talks in the past tense. Um, so I had an active imagination. I was touched in the head. I was a liar, etc. And then she says, it's not true, which is present tense. An interesting tense change there. I'm not quite sure what I get from that, apart from potentially when she was younger, she did have an active imagination. She was um, a liar at times, but she's saying presently I've changed. Now it's not true. That could be what's happening. She could also be talking in a general sense here, which is that's what her dad said about her. It wasn't true then. It's not true now. That's why it's in present tense. It's not true. Now, I told you about the claims that Lucy is making that her dad killed dozens of people, 50 to 70 people. However, when I, I said to you, I work only with quotes that people say, only with their direct words as directly reported. And in everything we'll see, there's very little direct quotes from Lucy saying her dad is a serial killer or what her dad did. Instead, there's a lot of vagueness in her words, which we can see here in these sections. I wouldn't keep my mouth shut. She doesn't say about what, just in general. She wouldn't keep, I wouldn't keep my mouth shut. I've been trying to tell people about my dad. She doesn't say what she's been trying to tell people about her dad. And each time I told someone, you told someone what? And this is a pattern we're going to see through the rest of Lucy's words is that although she alludes uh, or we could take an inference what it is that she's saying about her dad, she's never off. She's not often very direct about what it is she's saying about her dad. It's just these vague terms of, I wouldn't keep my mouth shut. I tried to tell people about my dad and I told someone, but she never ever says what it is that she was trying to tell them. Apart from that, again, very straightforward language. Apart from that bit at the end, he told me that it's better for people to believe that about me than him having to kill me. I, I don't even really understand what that means. It's hard to picture. There's, is there some construction going on there where she doesn't have the realistic language with which to convey it? More from Lucy. She says, I know where the bodies are buried. He would just tell us we had to go to the well and I knew what that meant. Every time I went to the well or into the hills, I didn't think I was coming down. I thought he would kill me because I wouldn't keep my mouth shut. Some familiar things going on here, but look at that first one. I know where the bodies are buried. That again is that my husband is a jerk um, line. It's very clean. It's very simple. Um, so there's no indication there in those words of any deception taking place. I know where the bodies are buried. It's very straightforward and it is very direct. I'm interested in some pronoun use here. He would tell us we had to go to the well. So that is, he would tell us, I think that means her and her sister or more siblings. We, I think that means her, her sister, um, more siblings and her dad as well, had to go to the well. 
Um, but then she talks about herself. I knew what that meant. Every time I went to the well, I didn't think I was coming down. And I wonder why um, she has switched from the joint pronouns of us and we to talking about every time I went to the well. She is inferring she's in danger with her father, but it's not every time we went to the well, I didn't think I was coming down. It's every time I went to the well. Um, I wonder why that is. Potentially, it's that this overactive imagination meant that every time she went up into the hills, she didn't alone. She didn't think she was coming down. Potentially, she did go with her father, but it was such a, a solo, lonely um, experience where her focus was on herself. That is why she is using I there. You'll notice as well here, though, that she says he would tell us we had to go to the well. I knew what that meant, but she doesn't tell us us what that meant. Again, it's a vagueness. There's a an, an, an illusion going on there that we could maybe fill in the blanks, but we don't do that when we're doing uh, investigation into statements. We never ever fill in the blanks. We just take the words that are said and there is nothing said there to tell us what that meant. Let's have more from Lucy. One way or another, those bodies are coming up with or without help. All I want is to get these sites dug up and to bring closure for people and to give these women a proper burial. Now, all I want is an interesting concept to introduce because what she doesn't say is, I want to get these sites dug up. No, she says it's all she wants. So she's introducing, um, potentially, is there a thought here that people are saying she has some different motives for, for doing this other than getting these sites dug up? So she has to persuade us that all I want is to get these sites dug up. That could be what is going there. Um, I'm interested in what is going on here. These sites dug up is the first thing that she mentions. So all I want is to get these sites dug up. So in her words, that's her priority. That's the thing that she wants. So it's not about justice, less so the closure of the burial because they come after these sites dug up almost like victory for her would be having these sites dug up. So it's, you know, I'm interested in as why she says that all I want is to get these sites dug up rather than all I want is for these bodies to be found or all I want is for people to know what happened to their loved ones. No, it's these sites dug up. And another thing here, because all I want, I don't think it is all she wants. I think that's why she's trying to focus us um, and say to us, this is all I want. But I think she has a bigger agenda at play she says is that she wants closure for people. And so often in deception, when someone is deceiving us about their actions, they will try and say, look, I'm a good guy here. I'm not doing this for me. I'm not doing this for selfish reasons. I'm doing this for, and they will use the word people. And she uses that there. So it's a bit of a red flag for me that her motives in this are maybe not the motives that she would like us to think. I think there's more than just wanting to get these sites dug up. I'm interested in something here of her use of plurals. So she wants these bodies are coming up. So bodies, plural, inferring multiple victims. Sites dug up. So sites, plural, suggesting multiple sites. She wants to give these women, so plural of women there. Um, so she's talking about multiple bodies, multiple sites, multiple women, and then proper burial, single. Not I want to give these women proper burials, plural. No, she wants to give these women a proper burial, singular. We will see more of that as we look through more of Lucy's words. Some more from Lucy here. Um, and this is about how she, again, tried to tell people what her father was like, but she claims no one would listen. She claims she raised this at school a lot and with, um, I think... Uh, although it's not dealt with here, I think she mentioned it to uh, people in the church and also to, to law enforcement. Lucy says, No one would listen to me. The teacher said family matters should be handled as a family. And law enforcement has said they couldn't trust the memory of a child. I was just a kid then, but I remember it all. We have a common theme from Lucy here. No one would listen to me. Say what? She doesn't say, so we don't know. And I remember it all. But again, she doesn't say what she remembers. 
So that's that common theme of Lucy of she says that she tried to say something or some things happened, but she doesn't actually say what the something is. She doesn't say what happened. No one would listen to me say what? I remember it all. Remember all what? If you read the articles on this, and I urge you to do, there's, I'll put the sources um, in the description. Um, there's a lot of controversy that she's trying to say that, or the articles say she mentioned this to adults all the time when she was a child and no one would pay any attention to her. But you'll notice that here, she only says once, she only says she mentioned it once because it was to the teacher, or rather she only mentioned it to one person who is the teacher, singular. And also, now she's reporting what the teacher said, but family matters, my dad is a serial killer, is not a family matter. It's a community matter. It's a legal matter. It's a matter for law enforcement. It's a much bigger matter than a family matter. What I, now, I'm not saying that that's not what the teacher said, but um, would Lucy's words, would she say family matters when she's describing trying to tell a teacher that her father was a serial killer, or would she say the teacher said this was a family matter or, or something like that? I find it very interesting that she's chosen that. It makes me wonder, what is it that she tried to tell the teacher? I'm not taking any blame on Lucy for this whatsoever. If she was trying to tell the teacher her dad was abusing her, for instance, then it's wrong that the teacher said family matters should be handled as a family. And I think that's entirely possible as to what's going on here because Lucy hasn't said what it was that she tried to tell the teacher. What I am saying is I'm not, this doesn't in, in any way say that Lucy tried to tell the teacher her father was a serial killer. Here's Lucy describing her father. My father was a lifelong criminal and murderer. He was a gas station attendant, mechanic and tow truck driver at many gas stations and truck stops. He picked up down and out women with no place to stay the night or to live. He picked up truck stop prostitutes. He picked up lonely, drunk women at bars. We tend to mention the things that are most important to us first when we list something. And here she says, my father was a lifelong criminal and murderer. Now, if someone had killed 50 to 70 people, would you call them a criminal? Oh, and a murderer. Or would you say, my father was a serial killer and a criminal? Or would you not even mention the criminal part because the serial killer part of it is just so wrong, just so big, so large that anything else is trivial by comparison. However, she says, my father was a lifelong criminal and murderer. The ordering there is very interesting. And again, we have Lucy talking about her dad, but not inferring something, but not really saying something. Uh, so what does this last part mean? Well, he picked them up. Now, that doesn't say that he murdered them or he killed them or he was violent with them even. It just says he picked them up. Something that is um, perfectly um, normal behavior for men to pick up women. Um, it does look like from the description there, maybe he was picking up vulnerable women, but she doesn't say what is wrong with that? She doesn't say what happened as a result of them being um, vulnerable or, you know, down on their luck or anything like that. She just says, quite matter-of-factly, the type of uh, woman that her father used to pick up, nothing else about them. Now, this is interesting. Lucy says, I remember the victims being female, white, late 20s to late 30s, average height, average medium build, no skinny underweight woman, no woman with a few extra pounds or overweight, black hair, dark brown hair, dark brown with red highlights hair and dirty blonde hair, no all blondes, shoulder length, give or take a few inches, some curl in hairstyle, plain dressers, not a lot of makeup or jewellery. The first thing there is victims plural. Uh, so that's an interesting data point because we haven't, you know, she's at least describing them as victims. She doesn't say victims of what? She doesn't say people that he killed um, or people that he even abused or was violent with or anything like that. She does, though, say there were multiple victims there. And then the rest of it almost describes just about any white woman from late 20s to late 30s, really. There's nothing particularly stand out about any of those descriptions there. It's a kind of catch-all for all but a few women 
um, of of that or a few white women of that age group. It's it's a really interesting, really really wide, interesting um, description of the victims. Now, we're going to come on to Susan's words shortly. And Susan says that Lucy never, ever spoke about her father, Donald, being a serial killer until Donald accused Lucy of stealing some money from her when she was uh, an adult, I believe. And um, Lucy denied stealing that money and in retaliation um, said that her dad was a serial killer. Now, Lucy talks about that. And she says, I did take that money. I've been honest about everything and I'm being honest about this. I took it because it was the only way I knew to hurt my father. I went back to Minnesota where I was living then and I gave it all away. I did take that money. That's my husband is a jerk. Again, uh, that there is nothing there that persuades us or tries to convince us. It's very clean. It's very straightforward and it's very factual. So I believe she did take that money uh interesting there i gave it all away what does that mean does that mean she, she i think she wants us to think she gave it to charity or good causes or to her friends but i gave it all away can also be about spending the money i gave it to shops i gave it to i don't know casinos i uh gave it to drug dealers or you know whatever it was um but i gave it all away i don't think that was as altruistic um, as um, she'd like us to believe, because I think if she gave it all away to charity or good causes or people who needed it, she would have said a little bit more there, explained where she gave it all away to. But she just says, I gave it all away. And she admits here that uh, stealing the money was the only way I knew how to hurt my father. So in her very own words here, from Lucy's own words, she wanted to hurt her father. Nothing wrong with that, given what we've seen before, that um, she certainly has been beaten by her father. I think there's definitely uh, words there um, that I believe from Lucy to say that her father treated her terribly. So I'm not for one second saying that she should not want to hurt her father or she had no reason for wanting to hurt her father. What I do want us to notice is there that she does say in her own words at the time she stole the money that she wanted to hurt her father. More from Lucy now. I don't feel anything for my father, nothing at all. I wanted justice when my father was alive, but he's gone. I just want for the families some closure and a proper burial. Now, this is less my husband is a jerk because she says, I don't feel anything for my father. And that on its own would have been fine. But then she comes and says nothing at all and attempt to persuade us that it's really true. So I think from this, I get a sense that she still feels things about her father. It may be disgust. It may be disdain. It may be um, a sense of loss without closure and everything like that. But I do think there are some feelings for, or some unresolved feelings, shall we say, for her father from that language there. I wanted justice when my father was alive, says Lucy. But not now, you know, um, I think that this 50 to 60 people, mostly women who have been murdered and their families may still want justice. They may still want to find out what happened to their loved ones. But Lucy is saying here she doesn't want justice. She did when her father was alive. She wanted him, I don't know, to pay for what he did or to be, um, you know, uh, accountable or for people to know what it was that he's done. But now that he is dead, justice has gone from her mind. But she does say, um, I want for the families some closure and a proper burial. And look, we have this again, where I want for the families, so that is plural, so more than one family, some closure and a proper burial. Again, just one burial that she's interested in, just one burial. We've seen that before. Interesting. So Lucy got law enforcement to take an active interest in what she says and um, they took her to the area where um, she said that uh, she she says, she doesn't say in words, it's not quoted in the articles, but she claims that she, as a young uh, child, would help her father dispose of the bodies and she went back to one of those areas to identify it with law enforcement and she describes it. It looked completely destroyed. The majority of the trees were gone. This was, there was a mound of dirt with a hole in the ground. The sheriff said that was the well. I asked him a couple of times if he was sure. He said, yes, I knew it wasn't. 
Now, if you knew it wasn't the well, would you ask a couple of times if he was sure? Bear in mind, she is showing him where the well was. Um, or would you ask a couple of times if he was sure? Or would you say a couple of times, I don't think this is? Or, nah, this is not the well. But she says, I asked a couple of times if he was sure. He said yes, but I knew it wasn't interesting. She says in description, the majority of the trees were gone. To say that, she must know how many trees there were previously. It may have been a well-forested area and it's been um, changed since then. And she says the majority of the trees were gone. So she recognises it, but she recognises the trees are gone. But then says she knew it wasn't, and that means she knew it wasn't the right place. Um, so... I don't believe, I think they were actually in the right place there. She recognized it. She's saying she recognized it. Um, she said, are, are you sure? And she then says, I knew it wasn't. So uh, when they went and looked around this area, they did not find anything that suggested there were multiple bodies buried there. And uh, I think she is trying to keep the story alive somewhat with this one. And one last thing, uh, this is a social media post from Lucy. Um, on the back of this story becoming uh, well known. And she said, I can't listen to any more voicemails or read any more emails and social media messages from people asking if their missing family member or friend could be one of the bodies up in the hills. My heart goes out to you and your family. And we can see here once more, plurals, voicemails, so many voicemails, emails, messages, and all from people and talking about the bodies up in the hill and then at the very end, my heart goes out to you and your family, singular. Just one family. Lots of bodies, lots of voicemails, lots of messages, but her heart only goes out to one family. So that's all we've got from Lucy. What do you think is going on with Lucy then? What do you think is going on? You know, does she have any credible evidence, credible words to say that her father was a serial killer, as she claims? Or is she doing this for other reasons. So you're ready for the words of Susan, the other sister involved here. Susan said, Lucy destroyed my father. He was no angel, but he certainly wasn't a serial killer. The entire time I knew it wasn't true. So Lucy's words are less straight, uh, sorry, Susan's words are less straightforward than Lucy's. Not he wasn't a serial killer, but he certainly wasn't a serial killer. And this is the my husband's a jerk example. Uh, the second part of that where extra words are added in to make the truth stand out more or to make what is being alleged or what is being deceived stand out more. But he certainly wasn't a serial killer. If you took the word certainly out of there, that sentence would mean the same thing. So why has the word certainly been added in there? It's to persuade us or to convince us that this didn't happen. The entire time I knew it wasn't true. Why not just say it's not true? What Lucy had to say is not true. Why the entire time, the entire time of what? I, I'm sure she is referring to a certain period of the time, but only during that certain period of time did she know it wasn't true. Why not just say it isn't true? The, we choose the words we use for a reason. They're never accidental. Either our brain on autopilot is choosing the best fit words for the situation that's going on in our head or under pressure or in important situations, we deliberately and think through the words we're using. And here she says the entire time it wasn't true. I want to know why she said it like that. Why is she not just saying that what Lucy said is not true? Now, uh, you remember the stolen money? Um, where Lucy was alleged to have stolen money from her father. And at the time, Lucy was like, nah, it wasn't me. This is Susan describing that day. He goes, and he is Donald, so he goes, Lucy called the sheriff and accused me of being a serial killer. And I go, yeah, right. And me and him both giggled. And then talks about Lucy turning up later. She was just bawling, and she goes, I'll strip down. You can search my car. I do not have it, or I don't have it. Now, the first part here, if this is supposed to be support of the fact that um, her father is not a serial killer, it's really weak. You know, the fact that he and her giggled about the allegation doesn't mean that it's not true. 
at all. The fact that he laughed about it does not mean it's not true. In fact, knowing the psychology of serial killers, it may make him more likely to be a serial killer. The fact that he laughed about the allegation and giggled about the allegation rather than was appalled, scared, petrified um, when Lucy said that to the police. But um, the, she seems to think the fact they both had to giggle about it is evidence to say that it can't be true. But nothing could be further from the truth. Now, this is Susan talking about her dad. He was caring. I'm not stating that he was an angel, but he loved all four of us, even Lucy, and he bent over backwards for all of us throughout our whole life. Now, this is all quite straightforward. He was caring. I can believe that Susan thinks her father, Donald, was caring. She also thinks he wasn't an angel. Yeah, I believe all of that. He loved all four of us. I can even believe that. But why does she say even Lucy? Why not just she, he loved all his kids or he loved all four of us? Why does Lucy, why is Lucy a different case? Why is Lucy a special case? We don't know. But in Susan's head, Lucy is a different case because she says even Lucy, alluding that Lucy was less lovable in some way. Now, I don't think that is right in any way whatsoever. Uh, you know, I'm not trying to excuse something. I'm trying to say what is going on in Susan's mind that Lucy um, appears to be less lovable, maybe more difficult as a child. Um, maybe there were other circumstances that meant Lucy was less likely to be loved, but that in, in the words here, there, Susan thinks there is something less lovable about Lucy. This is Susan talking about law enforcement and Lucy's allegations. They said they believed her 100%. She destroyed my father's image. I didn't ask for this. So Susan is saying that Lucy destroyed my father's image. Not lied about my father, but destroyed his image. Now, an image is something that's not real. An image is something that people see, but it's not real. You think of the image of famous film stars, and we all know that that's the image. That's when we see them uh, in films or when we see them in paparazzi photos. But we know they do the same things as the rest of us. You know, they, uh, they have to do the washing up at times and so on. But they don't let us see that because that's not their image. So I think what she's saying here is that she's protecting or was protective of her father's image, i.e. not who her father was, but Susan was more concerned or is more concerned with how people see and remember her father. I didn't ask for this. Again, why is she saying that? Uh, you know, um, it, again, it doesn't mean that your dad is not a serial killer just because you didn't ask for this to be brought on the family. Lucy continues, sorry, Susan continues, my father was not the man she makes him out to be. He was strict, but he was a protective parent who loved his children. Strict fathers don't just turn into serial killers. I'm two years older than Lucy. I think I would know if my father murdered. So she's talking about her father specifically here. My father, not the man she makes him out to be. He was strict. So directly, this is about Donald. He was strict. But he was a protective parent, again, just about Donald, he who loved his children, again, his children. So this is all about Donald. And then she switches to the general. So she doesn't say my father did not turn into a serial killer or my father or he was not a serial killer. She just talks in general. Strict fathers don't just turn into serial killers. That's says nothing whatsoever about the allegation in point, which is that Donald was a serial killer. Strict fathers don't just turn into serial killers. That may be true. Strict fathers aren't all serial killers, but they're sure there's a strict father who has been a serial killer. So this is, is a weak, weak um, refutal of the allegation because it's not about Donald at all. It's about strict fathers in general. Again, another bit of weakness. I'm two years older than Lucy. Susan, I'm 20 years older than people who know way more than me about a lot of things. That is no. The fact you're two years older than Lucy does not mean that she's wrong and you're right. That's not how things work. And another bit of weakness. I think I would know if my father murdered. Not my father did not murder anyone. Not I would know if my father murdered, but I think 
I would know if my father murdered. Not, she's not even convinced herself. She just thinks she would know if her father murdered. So Susan ends there with quite a weak rebuttal of the allegations made about her father. So what are your conclusions then? What are you thinking? Is this guy a caring but strict protective father? Or was Donald a serial killer, as Lucy says? What are you thinking? Well, let's look at the conclusions on both those sisters. Lucy. Uh, a lot that Lucy said is believable. She describes beatings that her father gave her. She describes a fear in her childhood as well. So um, there is a lot there. However, Lucy is not specific in direct quotes about what she thinks her father did. She alludes to it. Um, and she leaves little hints here and there that, that things happened, but she's never direct. She holds back from saying outright what it was she was trying to tell people, what it meant when they went to the well. So I, I think from Lucy's words, I think there's some things going on. I don't think she liked her dad. I think she bears him huge resentment. Um, and I think that's justified in terms of what she's spoken about, the way that um, Donald used to treat Lucy. Um, and I think this is about that those unresolved feelings that she has of disgust, um, of wanting the world to know what a horrible, bad father he was. Um, that's what I think I get from, from her words. I think most of the time when she's talking about letting people know what her father was like, I think this is about saying to people that he was an abusive father. Not that he was a murderer but that he was an abusive father and people would not listen to her. And I think that has really uh, given Lucy a hard time. But in her words, is there enough for me to say that um, she has evidence, she's witnessed, she knows that Donald was a multiple serial killer? No, there's not. However, I do think she may, th no, I do think she believes that her father is capable of murder. And perhaps when she's talking about that singular burial and that um, the burial for the family, singular, that she knows of a murder that her dad uh, carried out or potentially uh, she strongly believes there was a murder, the single murder that her uh, dad carried out. She could even believe he's capable of being a serial killer because she views him as a very evil person. Um, again, as well, when she talked about the burial, the singular that she was after, I wonder if that's actually the burial of Donald's reputation, image, something like that as well. So in conclusion on Lucy, she had a terrible childhood. She, has no, she does not like her father with very good reason. I think what she's doing now is about um, getting uh, people to know what an awful father is that he was to her rather than having direct evidence that he is a prolific serial killer. And Susan, well, we started this off with a tale of two sisters. One sister says he's a serial killer. The other sister says no. Actually, I think they both believe the same things. Susan's defense of her father was weak. You know, she really could only say, I think, think I would know if he was a murderer uh, but she doesn't say outright I know he wasn't a murderer he was a good dad um, so I think they both come uh, from exactly the same place which is they both believe it's possible that Donald was a murderer or did murder someone the difference is Lucy doesn't like her dad, didn't like her dad, and wants people to know what a horrible person he was. And Susan is concerned with the image and people remembering this guy, Donald Dean Studi, as someone who was a nice, caring father, but with his flaws. But ultimately, I don't believe there's enough there from either sister to say this is a prolific 50 to 70 victim serial killer. What do you think? If you want to connect socially, if you go to connect.neveratruerword.com, you can connect with me there. I'd love to discuss this case further with you to get your views, your questions, or even your suggestions as well. And uh, there's more podcasts available as well. If you want to listen to some deep dives into some cases, then have a look at other podcasts available from Never A Truer Word. And we'll see you soon for a new podcast.